Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this problem. Okay. So we have this improper integral and we are going to find its value with the help of residue. Generally, when we talk about residue, it is related with complex valued function. But here with the help of residue, we are going to find the value of this real improper integral. Okay. So to solve this problem, we have a fixed method. So let us discuss the method first and then we will discuss its solution. See, when you have this type of integrals, okay, integration minus infinity to infinity, p of x upon q of x dx, okay, then we use this method. The limit of integration must be minus infinity to infinity. Here the limits are 0 to infinity, but no need to worry, we will do necessary adjustment and we will solve this problem. p of x upon q of x, both are polynomials, right? Condition is, degree of denominator that means degree of polynomial in denominator should be greater than or equal to degree of p of x plus 2. This condition must be satisfied then only we can apply this method. After that there is some construction there is some theory part that theory says we consider a contour getting we consider a contour with a large semicircle with a large semicircle, okay, diameter along the real axis and the circle lies in upper half of a plane centered at origin, okay. So that kind of circle, semicircle we have. As I told you, we consider a large semicircle that means R tends to infinity. If R goes to infinity on this side, we will have minus infinity. On that side, we will have infinity and that's why we get the limits minus infinity to infinity. There is some theory behind it, but I am not going to uh, discuss in details since my focus is to solve this example first, okay. After that, we consider a function f of z. So now the question is how to find f of z? It's quite simple. Just replace x by z everywhere, you will get your f of z. We have to find the singular points of f of z. That means a point where the function is not analytic. So singular points can be anywhere, they can lie in upper half of a plane, they can lie in lower half of a plane. We will give importance to the singular points which are lying in a upper half of a plane, get it? We will find residues at the singular points and the value of integration, this integration i you can say, the value of integration is 2 pi i sum of residues, get it? So this is a fixed method we have when we have such type of problems ready and we we follow the same. So let us consider the integral let us call it as i. So let me write here consider consider let me write clearly consider i is equal to the problem is that the given integral has limit 0 to infinity. It is expected to have limits minus infinity to infinity, but no need to worry. I will take the limits minus infinity to infinity. I will find its value first and with the help of it, I will find the value of given integral. So I will consider here minus infinity to infinity. What we have dx upon x square plus one, as well as I will note here f of z also. Okay, this f of z. So here, f of z. How we get our f of z? Just replace x by z, 1 by z square plus 1. This is our f of z, right? After that, we consider a large semicircle like this. Consider a large semicircle centered at origin, lies in upper half of a plane and diameter along real axis. Okay, so let me clearly mention all these things. Consider a large semicircle centered at origin line in the upper half of a plane and diameter along a real axis okay after that as i told you earlier the given function should satisfy this condition d degree of denominator okay 
so dear uh, here let me mention here degree of denominator degree of denominator is 2 greater than or equal to degree of numerator so numerator there is no any polynomial that means a polynomial of degree 0 degree 0 plus 2 that means 0 plus 2 is equal to 2 right <coughs> so the condition is satisfied that is the same thing can be written as that is z f of z tends to 0 as mod z so it tends to yes as mod z tends to infinity getting having a same meaning or uh, same meaning so if you want to check this one you can check this one okay but just you can easily observe here and you can find the degree difference is 2 so all conditions are satisfied now the next task is to find singular points of a given function singular points that is a point where the denominator is 0 denominator is 0 we have polynomial of degree 2 in denominator it is better to find its factor so we can easily find where the denominator will be 0 right so just make a screenshot of it first then i will go further so now i will find factors right of denominator so consider f of z our f of z is 1 upon z square plus 1 right so 1 upon z square minus i square having a same meaning value of i square is minus 1 minus minus plus right so purposely i am expressing the denominator in this way since we know the formula a square minus b square do you know this formula a square minus b square a plus b a minus b so this formula is applicable there what will i get there 1 upon z plus i z minus i so now it's quite easy to find the singular points so if i put z is equal to minus i the first bracket will be zero and if i put z is equal to i the second bracket will be zero that means z is equal to i and z is equal to minus i are giving zeros at denominator it means these are singular points so let me clearly mention here z is equal to i and z is equal to minus i are singular points but as i told you earlier we give the more importance to the singular point which is lying in a upper half of a plane so let us find the positions of i and minus i imaginary axis real axis you know i lies here i i will be here and minus i will be here it means i lies in a upper half of a plane minus i lies in a lower half of a plane it means we should consider i and we have to find residue at i so i should mention here but only z is equal to i lies in the up per half of a plane it means we have to find singular point uh, sorry re residue at z is equal to i only so let us find residue of f of z and z is equal to i so now the question is how to find residue residue has definition and with the help of definition also we can find residue but the problem is that in, it involves Lorentz series expansion. It very lengthy task to find a Lorentz series and then find the residue. If you have a singular point, okay, which is a pole, then we have very simple formula to calculate residue. And fortunately, Z is equal to I is a simple pole. Minus I was also simple pole. Let me mention both are simple pole. So these are very sim these are simple poles. So we have very simple formula to calculate residue, and that formula is limit z tends to i z minus i f of z. This is a formula. Limit z tends to i z minus i f of z. Yes, this f of z. One upon z plus i z minus i. Can we cancel anything? Yes, definitely this z minus i, z minus i will get cancelled, right? We want some more space to write. Just make a screenshot of it, then I will go further. 
so now it's time to apply the limit okay apply the limit means what at a place of z i'm going to put i i'm going to put z is equal to i everywhere okay so we will get 1 upon i plus i 1 i was already there 1 upon 2i so this is residue right so only one singular point we got which lied in upper half of a plane and we found out residue also so let us go to the last step then the value of integral i i means what minus infinity to infinity dx upon x square plus 1 is equal to 2 pi i into sum of residues okay 2 pi i residue only one residue this one let us put 2i 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 cancel and we will get simply pi so this is value of integration so minus infinity to infinity that dx upon x square plus 1 is equal to pi okay so we got the value of integration but see the given integral is different our target is to find the value of that integral, not this integral. Okay, but don't worry. With the help of this value, we can easily find value of that integral. Just make a screenshot of it, then I will go further. Okay, so then what will I do? I will consider this integral again. Consider integration minus infinity to infinity. What we have 1 upon x square plus 1 dx is equal to see we have seen one property of definite integral that is when you have this type of integral and if the function is even we write to 0 to a f of x dx and it is 0 if the function is odd right so this property of definite integral we have already seen several times so the function is odd we directly say the value is 0 and if function is even we write 2 and 0 to a f so when we apply this technique, when you have this kind of limits, minus a to a, here also we have minus infinity to infinity. So definitely we can use this. But now the question is how to check the function is even or odd. The definition says f of minus x is equal to f of x. Then we say the function is even and f of minus x is equal to minus f of x. Then we say the function is odd. When minus sign will get cancelled, it will get absorbed inside the function, then we say the function is even. And if the function throws this minus sign outside, we say the function is odd. Generally, what we do, we observe, we observe the power and then we say the function is even or odd. Okay, you can easily see the power is 2 and 1 is a constant, so the function is even function, so we can use this formula. So, what will I get? This is equal to 2, 0 to infinity. 1 upon x square plus 1 dx the reason is function is even okay so let me remove this part let me remove this part so the function is even we have the value of this integral which is pi so let us put pi here pi is equal to 2 0 to infinity 1 upon x square plus 1 dx so let me shift this 2 on this side so we will get pi by 2 it means 0 to infinity 1 upon x square plus 1 dx is equal to pi by 2. So, this is required answer. Okay. So, finally, we got the value of integral which is pi by 2. Make a screenshot of it, then we will stop. Thank you. See you in the next video.